Hey, good morning, guys. Welcome back to another episode. Unplug TV Australia here. And we had a 6 amp charge overnight. 6 amp charge overnight from 25% state of charge to 100. And the system has taken 7.815 kilowatt hours as per EDSE. Six hours and ten minutes. So the energy energy intake is actually rising in the car for a couple of weeks now, I would say. Um, and I heard this from someone in the forum, on the Facebook forum as well, and he was wondering what that is because his battery is fairly low as well. We can actually. Yeah. So and he he was wondering why the car is take, takes more energy now. Um, the battery is down and the car takes more and more energy. And I'm experienced the same. So we were both we are both hoping that the state of health is increasing at one stage while the car is realizing it can push more energy into the battery. But I think this is only wishful thinking. 20.5 20 point, 20 ampere hours charged into the battery from 25 to 98.9 the magic number again 98.9 <laughs> that's amazing all right we are still down to 73 percent no change so far battery temperature 24 27 okay let's go and after this massive hybrid drive on the weekend where we uh, moved my son's furniture and all this stuff we had only 33 kilometers on the gasometer. So that was all the gasometer gave us after this awesome hyper driving. It's usually the opposite. It, it's usually the opposite. After a hyper drive, longer distance hyper drive, the gasometer shows exorbitant values in the next day. So like like 65 or something or 65 kilometers or so but this morning 33 only very conservative very conservative and this is probably the maximum I can get if I drive super slowly well you know what I'm getting first blue bar is already gone after 2.8 kilometers of uh, slow Miss Daisy driving skin biopsy just for a checkup this morning for the skin cancer screening and yeah he took a biopsy straight away of this little tiny 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 dot on my nose tip 90% it's nothing but just to make sure peace of mind it didn't hurt at all you get an injection and yeah it's totally numb and dead all right so don't don't look at my nose all the time now half an hour parking there's no loss there's no recalculation after half an hour it was yeah 35 minutes still on 71 so I need to go to work now oh, shit. didn't say anything so I need to go back to get now um, which is about 17 kilometers or so so I won't make it home then the battery will be empty once I reach work and I've got no opportunity to recharge today so the battery will be totally empty what I will do now on the trip back I will probably um, press the charge mode button the charge button I I I recharge the battery while I'm driving and keep the battery at about 70% so I've got enough battery power then for this afternoon to get home without turning on the engine again so otherwise yeah it's better to recharge now if I if I stop there with an empty battery and I lose capacity while parking again it will be even em emptier it will be more empty it will be it will be more than empty which is not good I like to have control over the situation when the engine kicks in and when not so I'll probably recharge now while driving and then park there with a 65 70 percent battery and then we go home full electric this afternoon that's the plan let's go don't look at my nose 
Ah, uh, look at this beauty here. It's a school zone here. Uh, 40 kilometers restriction in the morning. And the car uses only 2 kilowatt. 2 kilowatt of power. And we're driving 40 kilometers an hour. That's pretty amazing. I should only drive 40 kilometers an hour all the time. I wonder how long the battery actually would last then with 2 kilowatts, 6... That would be 60 kilometers. Let's do some quick maths. Okay, so I'm pressing charge button now. We are at 67.5% state of charge. Engine is warming up in uh, serious mode. S ser serious mode. Um, if you look at the dog now, you can see that the engine is actually not producing any power. The generator is just idling. And there's no power production to, to recharge the battery at this stage. It's just warming up. And because we've got only, uh, already 28 degrees outside, it doesn't take long. So we are now in um, hybrid mode, in um, parallel mode. Recharging the battery. Now it changes over from serious mode to hybrid mode at about 70 kilometers per hour. Here we go. Now the engine drives the front wheels. And when I ease up on the power on the accelerator, it also charged the battery like now. So we are doing 100 kilometers per hour. gets 7 kilowatt yeah, around 7 kilowatts of charging power into the battery while driving in hybrid in parallel mode this is the solar research facility here of the United of the United of the of the University of Queensland here and they've got the solar panels on axis is here so they actually follow the Sun and they're doing some research about it they also have battery storage capacity here and I think this is the largest research solar battery research facility in Australia here it's a 3.7 3.6 megawatt solar farm purely for research but they're also of course um, supplying the University of Queensland with power with it and when you charge over there at the public charger you can be sure you get 100% renewable energy freshly made at least if you charge during the day so now we are close to Gatton it's another two and a half kilometers to drive I drive in pure electric then here and have turned off the engine now so, so far 4.2 liters per 100 kilometers this morning, which is quite a lot, but this will um, average out during the day when we go home in full electric then. And the gasometer shows 17 kilometers and so does the dog. So who is actually right now? Uh, so. Yeah, I think I've turned off the engine a little bit too early now. We've got 67.5% in there. I can't go by the percentage anymore. We've got only about 10 ampere hours left to go home. And as you know, I will lose about one and a half ampere hours while parking. So I think I'm a little bit short to go home in pure electric. Okay, so I arrived at work, 19 kilometers left and 66.8 percent the the dog actually does not take into account if the air condition is running or not it always shows you the same range so this was the trip for this morning um i just want to see so we have charged 6.7 kilowatt hours into the battery that is that is actually more than than usually and as i said we um left the car with 25 percent state of charge and charged up to 98.9 100 i don't know 
and the charge was 6.7 kilowatt hours into the battery this is measured in at the battery so it looks like it's charging more energy into the battery now since for a while now that's probably for the last three or four weeks I don't know why this is. And now there's no cooling happening while charging. Oh well, then uh, let's go to work. Yeah, I took this one off here. How does it look like? It's terrible, isn't it? I had to look in the mirror. It just no, I can't can't look at. Five o'clock now, and uh, let's see how. Uh, minus 1.4 amp hours lost while parking. And battery temperature 33, 34. We've got 33 outside cars in the shade for and oh, probably one and a half hours now battery is still nice and warm of course and we have only 61 percent state of charge so the prediction is 14 kilometers i probably can make it so guys i just watched um, gary's video his newest video um, about the outlander phev gary is from gary unfrequent <coughs> oh, i can't say this word Unfrequent world, unfrequented world, and and Gary's Gary's channel. I link it. I link it down below so you can have a look. Um, I just watched his um, newest video, and he mentioned me actually in there. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> that is cool. Now I I know he gets some negative comments as well on his channel sometimes, and saying, "Oh, how can you actually buy this car? The battery is degrading the car. The battery is breaking down, and you have to replace it very soon. It costs you a fortune." I know exactly what he's talking about because I'm getting these comments all the time, not only on my channel but as messages as well, and emails and all this kind of stuff. And and I, I know I have made a lot of negative videos negative in terms of I posted negative stuff about this car well I, I still have the car and I still love driving it and I think it's a great concept it's a great car it has definitely its purpose until we get the full electric versions of SUVs of all other cars I, I love the Outlander PHEV I think it's a great car I'm doing 94% EV driving here in this semi-rural area I'm not driving much city traffic here so you know I've got higher speed roads here around my home which I usually have to use so I can't really catch up with everyone else who is just driving in the city and who's getting 50 60 kilometers on the battery charge but you know sometimes you just get frustrated because the car is not delivering what has been promised and that's what the, what my channel actually is about that's why I have started it a year ago over a year ago now and was complaining and about the car and the battery situation and about the service from Mitsubishi here in Australia that was the main purpose of the whole channel to, to bring this out see I was trying to find information about battery degradation about the Outlander PHEV and the uh, potential battery issue before that and couldn't find really anything there are some messages some forums out there there is a little bit here and there about it but nothing in depth what is going on with this car and why this is all happening so that's why I started the channel and of course there is a lot of negative things a lot of things which doesn't make sense which could have been improved by Mitsubishi already which could have made this car almost perfect but at the moment they are they are not responding to such requests and to these reports and videos I'm making look the, the frustration with the battery degradation if you don't have the PHG watchdog you don't have any figures any numbers at all and the only thing you can do is you can talk to your dealer and say hey what's going on I have lost 10 kilometers since I got the car new and I don't know why and the dealer tells you everything is fine with the car it runs within the specs there's no problem with the battery that is how the car is supposed to be and you are just not happy and satisfied with this with such answers you get from your dealer.
gonna be five here down here. So well and if you if you commute the same distance, the same route every day again and again and again and you notice after a year or so you can't make this anymore, you have a degraded battery, the car is not stacking up to the promises anymore. Merging on the highway. All good. You have to find other sources of information. And I was and I'm trying to provide as many information, as much information as I can in terms of the technology in terms of, of figures, I show you the dog all the time. I, I try to explain and make sense of all these numbers, of all this data we are collecting with the PHEV now. And sometimes it they it doesn't even make sense to me. And you you you're getting frustrated, of course. You you do get frustrated. But now after after making all these videos and and getting to know so many other people which having the same problem and finally now for the last six weeks I would say Mitsubishi is actually aware of what's going on and is listening and we've got their attention to this problem it all makes sense this whole whinging about the battery about loss of range about loss of capacity about charging issues, about degrading, degraded batteries. It all makes sense now. And, and I must say from a customer perspective, we will have a win with this whole situation now here in Australia, at least. And I hope this will be a, and I, and I hope this will be a good sign for other countries as well, for other markets which have similar promises on their website for the older PHEV models now. And I hope everyone will get their fair share out of it and Mitsubishi is stepping up their, their game and make provide good customer service and we all can enjoy driving this wonderful car. So it's not about making this car bad or being negative. Need to pay a little bit of tension now here. So this, this is not my intention to, to whinge about the car, to complain only about the car and say everything is shit and everything is not working correctly and it's it's a bad system. Even if it sounds like sometimes like this, it's that's not that's not the purpose of this channel here really. So bear with me a little while longer and I will share the outcome we have with Mitsubishi Australia and in regards to the Outlander PHEV and it will all make sense to you. So thanks again Gary for your clarification on your channel in your last video. It makes totally sense to me and I'm, I'm, I'm not here making these videos to keep others away from buying this car. You have to decide yourself if you can. We are all early adapters in this case. It's new technology, fairly new technology and as we can see Mitsubishi has made a promise which they couldn't really which they couldn't really keep and now they realize they have to come up with a solution for that and we are almost there. Ja, hast du schwimmen heute? Hm? Hast du schwimmen? <lacht> Ach, der Kitty.